Well, welcome everybody again. This is Bill Dupenthaler here with Mike Conan as usual. And we are so glad you're joining us again for our podcast, the Legacy Discipleship Podcast. And let me bring you up to speed in case you um, didn't hear our last podcast. We were talking about things that draw us away from the Lord. And, and we ended up really focusing on uh, really one of the most famous of Jesus parables, the parable of the seed and the sower. And we talked about, and you have to listen to the podcast. I'm not going to give you yeah. the whole thing again, right, Mike? <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but we talked about a lot of these different things that, that, um, that, that uh, prevented people from coming to Christ or prevented people from uh, staying close to, to Jesus. And, and we focused in on the worries of this life and um, the deceitfulness of going after wealth and money and things like that. Like that, uh, and then we mentioned the 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 third thing, and and these are all things that Jesus called weeds or thorns that that choked out our our fruitfulness in, in our in our life yeah. or prevented us from even coming to Jesus. So we, we the third one was the desires for other things, and we we mentioned that, but but you know after we finished the podcast, we were chatting, and and uh, and Mike, I, I appreciate you bringing this up. <laughs> you 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 messaged me later and said you know there's probably a whole podcast just in that little topic of the desires for other things right yeah for sure for sure well honestly bill as i was thinking about our podcast from last week i i was really obviously myself as always when you're teaching the lord has the lesson for you first so right, there's a right. lot of things i was paying attention to in my own life but then out of it, I was thinking about, but boy, I don't even know if those things are really the things that are distracting me, uh, per se, as a follower of Jesus from that call to discipleship. You know, in maybe the way I'd look at it is as we think about, you know, that list that you had given and then it gets to other things. Uh, I love maybe that the Lord recognized this was going to be a uh, time and eternal teaching. Wealth, people going after it's always going to be a part of stuff. Um, and worries always going to be a part of stuff you know uh, but there's going to be other things that are going to be unique to each culture and mm -hmm. uh and at the same time parallel of course our our flesh in us the the part that doesn't follow jesus may be drawn to other things uh that might look different for each time and period but uh uniquely uh, would change as generations go by like we're not worried about like you know the, the next guy's chariot and you know how cool a chariot he has compared to our chariots anymore. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, and, uh, we live in a culture of abundance. To be honest, yeah, yeah we, we do. We're living in a time that uh, most generations, in fact, no generation could have imagined that we would live in this time. Nobody could walk into a house from even fifty years ago and be like, "Oh my gosh, this is what's going to happen." I remember going to Disney World, and you probably did as a kid too, and going into the the dreams of the future. I don't remember what it was called. Yeah, um, maybe future world or whatever. Yeah, and being like, no way, that's going to happen. And now everything has happened except for the flying cars. <laughs> you know, it's like <laughs> we don't have flying cars yet, but we have touch tone everything. The Jetsons is real. Like you can now, Alexis can do our Alexa. I always call her Alexis, but you know that's my pet name. But I don't have one. But you can say Alexa, do this, Alexa, do that, and she'll do everything for you. It's just like yeah, the are, are really real life. And for our younger listeners, that was an old, old cartoon that Bill and I probably uh, know. Yeah. Uh, but having said that, there's so much good stuff, right, Bill? I mean, uh, why don't you, you know, like as we just get prepared to talk about this topic, we want to start by saying uh, the world that we live in is full of so many good things. And, and we're going to put this under the general category of entertainment, things that bring us joy or maybe not joy, but are fun. And the world in this abundant world is we get to have more fun than any generation before. Today. And the Roman Empire, they went through this season, too, you know, where they they had gotten to the point of where they had abundance. And so they could start doing more leisurely things. Right, and that's right. certainly the cycle that we're in now. And it's not yeah. a bad thing. Right. Yeah. Well, and, and, and as we were chatting just before uh, starting the podcast, um, we don't we don't want this to be uh, to come across as like this is our rant against entertainment and against our phones and computers and technology and all that stuff. Not at all. Uh, I mean, it's a source of information. Uh, 
even for us as followers of Christ, I mean, I think that that we certainly, and this might be a whole other podcast, but just to talk about how we how we use social media and we use technology uh, to to uh, to form connections with people or to reconnect with people, to to have divine appointments on social media, to uh, to have creative fellowship. We have we have uh, group chats where people people text in. Um, prayer requests and we have zoom where we can have meetings with people that live live in other parts of the world Uh, and and so uh, we have opportunities to mix up with with uh, people that don't know Jesus yet and 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 we have opportunities to share our our joys and our experiences with our family and friends and and there's certainly nothing wrong with recreation and 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 having time off and enjoying a football game and relaxing and all those yeah. kinds of things so there's all kinds of positives with in that broad category of entertainment and social media and screens and all that kind of stuff however there's also <laughs> some pitfalls <laughs> well right that's this is where it gets tricky as the good things that god gives to us our hearts are so corrupt we just can turn them into idols and we can turn them they become so quickly things that end up we look to them to satisfy us we look to them to to bring us that joy that we're looking for and i part of this topic comes from last week's discussion but it was funny though because in church yesterday um the preacher was talking about his own addiction to fun Hmm. and how wow. he can't, can't and I, i'm right there with him as, as i'll tell you in a moment okay so but he was talking about how he can't even sit in a grocery line without getting his phone out and playing a game or or checking his facebook or whatever uh, and and he sees that everywhere at a restaurant and a, you know my kids are that way and and i i for sure have some of those tendencies to maybe not quite to that extreme but pretty close you know and i i see it everywhere like it's we're addicted to that i've got to be doing something i've got to be feeling fun i've got to be feeling joy and and so then we just feed ourselves this fun all the time and i i don't and again this is going to sound a little preachy but i am a former preacher and maybe i, st- I technically still am a pastor <laughs> so i could say that right you know um yeah. uh here's here's the bottom line i think because everybody looks at it and says the the way that they judge whether they're going to do something or not the whether the, the deciding factor for most people today is do i want to do that yeah do i yeah. want to do that that is yeah. how they make their decisions well do i want to do that uh and again the idea being if i want to do it i'll do it and if yeah. i don't want to do it don't you tell me i have to do it don't you make me feel like i should be doing it uh, cause if I don't want to do it, I am the bearer of that. And in all honesty, it's, you can see how it just quickly shifts entertainment, especially quickly shifts us to make it all about us and to make it all about putting ourselves at the center of the universe. And I told you this beforehand, um, I, at one point was just, uh, doing some research on different things. And I started looking into the, uh, satanic church and I was a little shocked at the core value of the satanic church because i kind of thought it would be let's worship satan you know because i i didn't know yeah (laughs) and i'm not going to go to the occult here for very long but did you know the motto for the satanic church uh, at the time and this is kind of king james english but it's do as thou wilt in other words do what you want that's the motto of people that are following the evil one have said just do what you want And so as I have thought about this whole concept and this whole idea, uh, it strikes me that that's what I find in myself a lot is, especially in our culture of abundance and maybe even more so coming out of this pandemic where we've been kind of forced out of our routines. And and so we tend to, you know, when you're forced out of your routines, you tend to actually, most of us tend to, to default to a lower level of things. And so perhaps even more than ever, uh, we find ourselves drifting towards being entertained. And I remember the study in the 90s, uh, they did the study on people and they they were asking them, you know, are you busy or not busy? Because if you and I were to pause in this point in the podcast and say, if I were to tell you, Bill, that they now have tractors, they now have airplanes, they now have trucks uh, that can take food everywhere, uh, if you if people were to hear about that 100 years ago, they would say, oh, my gosh, your life would be so easy. 
Mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, we spend all of our time getting those crops, right? Maybe not 100 years, 150 years ago, maybe it would be a better example. 150 years ago, every culture in the world would have said we spent almost all of our time trying to get food and get food to where it needs to get to. And then maybe we'll have some trade mixed in there, but the primary focus was still agriculture. And now we live in a time where we don't even think about that. Like it's not even a fork on thought. We go to the store and it is everywhere, all over the aisle. And so you might think, wow, gee, you have all this free time to worship the Lord then. You have all this free time to study your Bible then. You have all this free time to uh, exercise all that God would have for you. Boy, the world must be evangelized. God must be doing just incredible things. And instead, we've taken that void that we have and filled it up. And this comes back to that survey that was done in the 90s where people said they felt busier than ever. Uh, and at that time, they had said uh, what they felt busy with was they were very, felt very, very busy with television. Uh, and it was fascinating. The average person at that time watched five hours of television uh, during the 90s. And it was you know, roughly similar in the 80s. Uh, and then in the 2000s, it was high. And then guess what happened? Smartphones, right? And oh, yeah. so all of a sudden now we saw the shift from all the time going on TV to smartphones, a lot of times both, but, uh, and now we feel busier than ever because we've got all these things that we're doing. And so uh, anyway, all that to say, I, I think that if we were to look at the bottom line is we as Christians, we're not supposed to be just doing what we want all the time and being sucked into the, the latest thing that we think wouldn't be fun, that would be great. It doesn't mean we can't enjoy those things, but when it becomes our lifestyle and we look at the things that we're doing in our life, the things that we're spending our money on, uh, the, the things that we're spending our time on, if those are mostly entertainment things when we're in our free time or spare time, it should be a pause. Because this is what Second Timothy says. The spirit of God does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. Mm. This is what Mark's the Christian church different from the satanic. The satanic church says, do what you want. The Christian church says, love the Lord and enjoy everything he has for him, but do what he wants. And so <laughs> there's a little difference there. <laughs> it's a pretty big contrast, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, what are some of the entertainment things that you find yourself uh, drawn into or that you see around you that other people are drawn into? Maybe is a better way to phrase it. <laughs> well, I've got a friend that struggles with this, but uh, <laughs> no, you know, well, 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 you and I, uh, I mean, we both, we're both uh, Seahawks fans and, yeah. and, and, and I'm not kidding you. I, I could start talking about the Seahawks right now and, and derail this whole podcast because <laughs> we, we, we just start talking about that. And I, uh, and I actually uh, didn't even watch the Seahawks game this last weekend uh, because I wanted to focus on trying to get some other stuff done around the house, because I knew that if I started watching, I would, I would, okay, I'm going to use the word waste. I would, I would spend three hours of my Sunday afternoon watching the Seahawks game. And, and, uh, and, and for me, at least on this past weekend, that would have been a waste of time. And again, I'm not saying don't ever go to football games or watch football games because heck, I love that. But I yesterday, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's not get started. Uh, <laughs> but but things things like again, whether it's sports or music or or any form of entertainment, they're all good things. But they can they can get out of whack in our in our level of priority and and become real distractions and 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 time suckers and and, yeah. and we end up not getting things done uh you can watch football from saturday morning to sunday night and just yeah. i mean you'd never have to move just watch watch football all weekend long and it didn't used to be that way you yeah. know when we were kids like i'm a huskies fan and so You'd get to watch one or two games a year on TV. Maybe there'd be three or four, I guess. And then you get to watch your one local Seahawks was our case here. You get to watch them and then Monday night football. And that was it. Yeah. Then you had to read the paper to learn anything else. You know? <laughs> yeah. And what a different world. You know? Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, yeah, I, I, 
path of a stray too, because then you could get into podcasts about the, your sports teams you like. And, and, you know, then all of a sudden you're not just wasting three hours, but you're wasting, you know, 20 hours a week, maybe not wasting stuff, but probably the right term, but spending. Uh, and, you know, but it is, it is kind of fascinating how we can get down those trails. And Bill, yeah. you taught me something good too, and it, it might be worthwhile to just share a moment of your opinion on this, because it helped me. Because I find the same thing with kids sports. You know, kids sports can be the same thing where in the, the name of entertainment, and maybe we justify it in other ways, of, and, and I think you can do that. Both of us have coached over the years. Both of us have had kids do sports, so we're not anti-sports people, not anti-kids sports people at all. But I certainly have seen myself and others get off the rails with it, where all of a sudden you're like, man, what are we doing here? My 11-year-old is practicing sports 20 hours a week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it can become something that uh, really for for probably more of the parents than even the kids becomes an idol. Yeah, it becomes something that that uh, that really has the possibility of of affecting other aspects of our life. You know, so well let's uh, let's chat for a few minutes about uh, th these smartphones and and yeah. and. Uh, the, the technology that we have that, as we mentioned earlier, certainly uh, can be used for good and all those things that we mentioned. But, but uh, man, uh, our phones and, and, uh, and, the, and the technology that we have to be connected to the world, um, for me, the, the number one prayer request when people say, hey, what can we pray for, for you? Uh, honestly, I, I say this all the time. Uh, it's that I would pick up my Bible in the morning before I pick up my phone, because yeah, if I pick up so my good. phone, uh, and and even and even if it's just I'm thinking, ah, oh, I just want to just check the scores of the football games from yesterday, or I just want to see if I got a message from so and so. I just want to. I just want to. <laughs> whatever it is, yeah. uh, uh, there's a there's a good possibility that I'm gonna go down a rabbit trail and I'm going to run out of time and I won't read my Bible and, and I won't spend time with Jesus. Oh, it's so true. Isn't that, that's, that's so true. And that's, that's the thing is it, it's exactly like you say, it's, you, you get in and then your brain, you know, and this is what they've done a lot of with teenagers looking at the wiring of their brains now is, is conditioned for this dopamine hit that they get from uh, social media. Yeah. And, and adults now too, have, their brains have been rewired to need to compulsively check their phones. And me, I'll put my hand up too and say, I do this too. Uh, compulsively check the phones to see if uh, they've gotten that like that they wanted or if they've gotten a response to their post or if uh, this has happened or that has happened. And it's all this, this false sense of community in some ways. In, yeah. in other ways, like we've said many times, Neither of us are big, hey, throw away all of your possessions type of people. But uh, in fact, I, we keep up with all of our family and friends throughout the world uh, through social media and love it for that and, and love it for discussions I get into with people who are different than me. And it's, right. I mean, some people can't stand it. I love that stuff. I think it's great. You know? Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But there's also, I, I'll tell you, I, yeah, and, and I can also add on their games on my phone. You know, I've got... I, don't, I think everybody has a game or two on their phone that they play and they get distracted by. And, and I, I've got one that I play all the time. It's a stupid, silly game. It's like, you know, I just match up colors for an hour a day. Like as I, if I'm watching, a, <laughs> you know, whatever, you know, I'm doing something else usually while I'm doing it, but I'm not doing it now, thankfully. But, you yeah. know, it's amazing how our minds get so focused on, I want to have fun. I want to have this good and positive experience. How do I get that? I'll go to my phone. Yeah. And then we develop this relationship. Well, then you think about the, the, the positive thing we mentioned about sharing your joys and experiences with your friends and family. Well, that ends up because of what you were mentioning earlier, that, 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 uh, that desire for uh, likes and new followers and all those kinds of things. Uh, people end up posting basically unrealistic photos of what's really going on. Or, I mean, maybe it was, 
actually true that it happened, but but we end in, we end up into this into this comparison thing, and 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 we have these unrealistic expectations of what life is supposed to really be or whatever, you know, and, 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 oh, yeah. and it does, yeah, and it doesn't matter whether it's how someone looks or what they're accomplishing uh, or what they're doing. It's, it all looks so much better than what my life is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Everybody else is, is accomplishing great things and they look so perfect and, and, and their life is so great compared to my life, which isn't any of those things. Well, I told the kids yesterday, we were talking about this after the sermon on Sunday. And I said, you know, I'm thinking about doing just a week of social media where I post nothing but negative things, <laughs> nothing but all the crap, nothing but all the stuff that no <laughs> one would ever post about. So they're like, well, dad, what are you talking about? What would you post on it? They said, well, I'll give you an example of a post. It happened this morning. I said, hey, would you please unload the dishwasher? And you know what the response was? No, dad, I did that last week. I never post something like that on social media. I did it yesterday. I do it all the time. Or yeah. I, there's like a list of a thousand things that happen every day that are like embarrassing. Oh my gosh, this is what's falling apart with the world. Uh, when they're not scoring goals and hitting home runs, <laughs> they are yeah. little yeah. pills. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah. Like, so another another aspect of of um, yeah. these, these phones and social media and all that kind of thing that I think is just super important uh, for us to be aware of is we, we, we open up uh, a door for the enemy to infiltrate our minds with his lies. And, yeah. and, and again, I mean, we could talk about that for hours, but just we, we need to be aware that we have an enemy. And we mentioned this last week as well. We, we were talking about uh, that we have an active enemy in satan who wants to destroy us and deceive us and 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 ruin our walks with christ and ruin our effectiveness and all those kinds of things and man there are so many opportunities for us to have our minds influenced um by forces that that and and, and ideas and influences that we need not be listening to well, and that's the, that's the crazy part. If you think of it in the terms of the enemy desires to have you follow your flesh, have you follow your senses, uh, that's the goal of the enemy is how can I lead these folks away from the presence of God into this, whatever uh, it might look like, whatever I have to do to get them away from the presence of God. And the best way to do that is to appeal to their own fleshly selves, the things all oh, mm. that they would find appealing. And, and like you said, it always... Uh, in almost all these things, it starts somewhat uh, small, you know, like, oh, I just want to check my email. I just want to check something. And I, somebody was talking on the radio about how he sits in the back row and he watches in church when uh, people pull up the Bible app when the preacher is preaching. And he says three out of the four people will then go in and check their email and check something else as he's watching them. And I thought that's such a truism. I don't, I try not to do that. Um, but boy, I am tempted, you know, yeah. you get a little bored, you know, and that's the other thing I think that we are just not very good with anymore is being bored, you know, like <laughs> we have to be entertained all the time. Uh, and it is a, it's a crazy world. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> the thing that you mentioned, uh, your pastor saying, and I do the same thing, standing in a grocery line. And, and I mean, you know, you're going to be standing there for maybe a minute <laughs> yeah. or two or whatever, but, and, and pull my phone out and, and I, I, I don't want any downtime, you know? Um, so here's, here's the, the, the and, and this sort of plays into that too, but this, this for me, this last one that I'm going to mention, and you might have a few, a few others, but this is the last one that I was thinking about right now is um, this idea and this really has so much to do with what we talk about all the time of, of, of being disciples who make disciples. We, we talk about all the time of trying to be aware of God's presence in our life throughout the day so that we can have, we talk about our spiritual goggles on so that we can see yeah. with God's eyes the the people that are in need around us and, and being aware of divine appointments and that kind of stuff. And when, yeah. when we're constantly on our phones uh, and constantly being distracted by whatever it is that we're looking at, not necessarily bad things. When I'm, when I'm watching 
you know, or reading the, the reports about the, the scores of football game, I, in standing in line in the grocery store, I have taken my spiritual goggles off and I'm no longer aware of maybe potential divine appointments because I'm just being distracted and, and uh, my mind is off Jesus. And, and that's a huge one to me. Yeah. Oh, that's so true. And, and that leads me to a story I'd love to tell. Uh, one of my heroes, uh, have you ever heard of David Wilkerson? Of course, yeah. Uh, and um, I, I don't know if you've heard the story of his call, but he, for those of you who don't know, he's the, the founder of the Brooklyn Tabernacle. And they're most famous for the Brooklyn Tabernacle Choir. Well, he's not really the founder of it, but he came in and turned it into what it is now, uh, this mega church that Jesus is just doing incredible stuff. But he was a pastor of a small church that wasn't, it wasn't going very well for him and at the time. And he really sensed that God wanted him to sell his TV. And this is, of course, you know, in the 80s. So, uh, and it was uh, maybe in the 70s. I think it was the 80s. Uh, but uh, have you heard this story before, Bill? No, 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 no. Um, so, so he prays about it and, he's, and he doesn't want to give up his TV. And we're not telling you to give up your phones. So that's not the point here. But it, this is a cool story, though. So he, he prays about it and says, Lord, I think you want me to give up my TV. But I don't, I, you're going to have to just make this happen because I don't think I can do it. Um, and so, but he says, you know what I'll do, God, I'll give you 24 hours to sell my TV. And at that time, you know, there was no Facebook ads, you know, that you could just post it up on. So he put an ad in the newspaper and he didn't even say a lot about the TV, but he put the price, he said, he put some exorbitant price on it, you know, that he thinking nobody would buy it. So God would have to intervene, uh, for him to buy it. And, uh, and the next morning he wakes up and nothing. And then right at 23 hours, I think is, is he gave him this time frame. He gets the call. Oh, I haven't even seen your TV, but I want it. I'm going to pay full price. And boom, he, the guy buys the TV. And that's the story. Uh, that's the catalyst uh, for his story that, that where everything started to change for him. And what he had promised the Lord was if you, uh, if you, want me to get rid of this tv the hours that i'm spending watching tv i will spend in prayer now i don't know if he actually was able to spend three plus hours a day in prayer or not i can't but he then was on this journey with the holy spirit his goggles went from the little spectacles to this big because <laughs> he's so filled like we were talking about a couple of weeks ago with the presence of the lord uh, that's how he ends up going from this podunk town in the middle of nowhere down in the southwest uh, he sees these these gang members in Brooklyn on TV, and he just knows the Lord's called him. So he goes up, and he doesn't even know what he's going to do with these gang members. And these guys become the first people in his church. And Nikki Cruz is one of those guys who started all this awesome ministry. Yeah. And that for me is one of those stories that I just I always look back on and think, man, Lord, give me more David Wilkerson and less yeah. of me. Yeah, 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 and that's and that's kind of the point, I guess, of of this whole uh, uh, topic this morning. You know, so uh, hey, as we're wrapping up, Mike, would you share that that passage that that we were talking about uh, a little bit ago before we started the podcast? Yeah, so this comes from Ephesians chapter four, and again, one of my favorites, and I know one of Bill's favorites too. But I think this passage just nails this whole topic. Uh, of self-discipline and how Christians are supposed to be different. This is what it says. The Apostle Paul is writing here. It says, so I tell you this and insist on it in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do. And that's how the rest of the world lives, okay? In the futility of their thinking, they are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. And again, I love how the Apostle Paul takes you back to that heart thing. If your heart is in the right place, you're going to change. And this is what he says. Having lost all sensitivity, again, that sense of being uh, able to sense what God wants and doesn't want, they had given themselves over to sensuality. Uh, and of course, sensuality is living by your senses. And it says, having given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity. And this is my favorite line with a continual lust for more. In other words, that little dopamine hit, they get a little bit of it and they want more and more. And then it says that, however, is not the way you of life you learned. When you heard about Christ and were taught in him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus, you were taught with regard to your former way of life 
to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your mind, and to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of one body. That's what we're doing today. We're speaking hopefully truthfully to yeah. you and to us. And in your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And then this last line, and do not give the devil a foothold. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Incredible. Almost as if God wrote that. <laughs> what, was the, what was the passage again, Mike, just so people can make sure they can look that up? Ephesians 4, 17 through 27. Ephesians 4, 17 through 27. Yeah, that's fantastic. Why don't you wrap us up? Well, again, this is the Legacy Discipleship Podcast, and we really thank you for listening. And also, just as a summary, what we're talking about today, and, and Bill and I, are, we're right in the middle of the culture with you. We're not people who've pulled our families out, and we don't want to start an Amish community per se, but we do want to be mindful, mindful of the things that are pulling us away from Christ and pulling us away from being filled with his spirit. And both of us are nodding our heads saying, yes, yes, we too are sinful. We too struggle with these things, but we want to be a part with you of a movement that says, you know what? Let us say no to the things of the world more and yes to the things of Christ more and more. And you can always learn more about us and our ministry at rtrulegacy.com. We'd love for you to subscribe to this podcast, share it with somebody. Maybe there's somebody you know who's, who you're like, man, that person's really got some challenges in these areas. Send this to them and pray for us. We would really appreciate it. Yeah. And again, as always, uh, we want to encourage everybody to go out and make a disciple today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.